Hey everybody! I swear I'm not trying to find games that infuriate me to no end. It just happens to be that I'm trying to catch up on the backlog and some of these games that I'm trying to catch up on are just falling into that category. This is Divinity Dragon Commander. It is a weird hybrid of turn-based and real-time strategy with role-playing elements that was developed by Larian Studios, the guys who brought us the general Divinity series like Divine Divinity, Beyond Divinity, Divinity 2, the Dragon Knight Saga, and of course the more recent ones that more people are familiar with than those other games, Original Sin 1 and 2. They're also currently working on Baldur's Gate 3, which I will be taking a look at once it's actually finished. Now you may be wondering why I am first covering Divinity Dragon Commander as opposed to doing what I normally do with a bunch of game series and start at the very beginning, then work my way up. So in this particular case it would be starting with Divine Divinity and then Beyond Divinity, then Divinity 2 Ego Draconis, followed by Flames of Vengeance, then Divinity Dragon Commander, finally Original Sin 1 and 2. Well, the simple fact of the matter is that Dragon Commander is basically a spin-off title that has barely anything at all to do with any of the other games. It is technically set in Rivalon, and there are a few things here and there that reference other games in the series, and other games in the series might reference back to this, but generally speaking, the things that are going on in Dragon Commander are really not going to apply to basically anything else in the series, except for maybe a few myths and legends here and there, because after all, this does take place thousands of years before the events of all of the other games. Although, given the technology level of the game, you really wouldn't think that, because there is a hell of a lot of steampunk and magic mixed with technology here that makes it look far more advanced than anything you will see in any of the other Divinity games. So basically, if you weren't outright told that the game takes place thousands upon thousands of years before the other Divinity games, you'd be like, well, this seems like it takes place in the far future. It's a bit of a mess, and the continuity, thanks to Dragon Commander, has been kind of demolished with the series. Although, to be fair, none of them really intersect with each other all that much. Based on what I've seen and what I've experienced myself from my limited messing around with all the games in the series, it seems like all of the Divinity games outside of Original Sin 1 and 2 are pretty self-contained. They may have the shared world of Rivalon, and they may reference a few things here and there, but they all have their own individual stories and their own things that they're concerned with, so you generally don't need to worry about any sort of series continuity. Although, to be fair, I really haven't messed around with this series all that much outside of Dragon Commander at the moment. Which, of course, leads me into what I want to talk about with this particular video. You see, Dragon Commander is a game that, on paper, sounds really interesting. And it is actually a legitimately very interesting game, because it is that weird combination of strategy, both turn-based and real-time, as well as a bit of role-playing in the sense that you are making a bunch of decisions as the ruler, and those decisions will have different outcomes on the story and the setting. And the way the game basically works is that you have a turn-based political strategy game, as well as the real-time strategy battles, which are playing out a bit more like a traditional base-building real-time strategy game. And then you have the actual role-playing sequences and all the dialogue, which play out more like what you would see in a visual novel. And just from me saying that, you can probably already tell exactly what's wrong with this game, but let me go ahead and elaborate. One of those three components is considerably more interesting and considerably more fleshed out than all of the other ones. And it's the role-playing the visual novel-esque storytelling and all that. You wouldn't necessarily think that a strategy game like this would have pretty decent characters with some pretty solid dialogue and an interesting story that you actually want to experience, but Dragon Commander manages to do that. It's presented in a pretty strong manner with some surprisingly decent character animations and good voice acting with a bunch of interesting newspaper clipping style explanations of what the people are saying about your particular policies and what kind of havoc those are causing, and you can really start to get into that. And then you actually start playing the rest of the game. And you're stuck with the turn-based mechanics just being this campaign strategy where you're trying to build up forces within certain territories, and also you get a bunch of cards that you can play that will affect different battles. And then you actually go into fighting the battles themselves, and you can either have them auto-calc using commanders that you have, or you can choose to fight the battles yourself, 
in which case the game will switch over to the real-time strategy component where it plays out more like a traditional base building real-time strategy game, except that you can take the field as a dragon with a jetpack, which sounds a hell of a lot cooler than it actually is. Especially when you start realizing that in order to actually win the real-time strategy battles, especially once you get later on into the game and the enemy starts getting access to some of the more powerful units, you have to take the field. It's not a matter of choosing to do it when you feel like laying waste to the enemy's armies, or choosing to do it to strike a decisive blow. No, you have to do it just so you can keep up with what the enemy is throwing at you, because it turns out the enemy has basically unlimited resources and will just constantly keep spawning units. So it really just becomes a battle of attrition, one that is exceptionally tedious at absolute best, and downright infuriating at absolute worst. There's really no strategy to any of the battles. You just spawn as many units as you possibly can and charge, and hope that that is enough to defeat whatever the enemy's throwing at you. And if it's not, then you take your dragon form, you go in there and you start blasting units yourself with your flame breath or whatever kind of breath you have, and hope that that's enough to not only break through the enemy's lines, but also be able to destroy their buildings before they're able to replenish their forces. Most people, myself included, play real-time strategy games because we like to see what kinds of different strategies will work. We like to experiment a bunch. And Dragon Commander does not allow you to do that. There is exactly one way to win this game, and that is to play as aggressively as you possibly can. And even then, on the higher difficulties, that may not even be enough. Hell, even if you're playing on the lower difficulties, you still have to play the real-time strategy battles as aggressively as you possibly can, and that's just not fun. I mean, this isn't competitive StarCraft here, this isn't some eSport, this is a silly, ridiculous strategy game where you play as a dragon with a jetpack. You shouldn't feel like you're trying to play steampunk fantasy World War I the whole damn time. But that's just what you end up with, because the real-time strategy component is just so pathetically undercooked that every single battle turns into a war of attrition, and that just turns it into this obnoxiously tedious slog. And that is just downright depressing, because the really interesting component of the game, the sort of political simulation, the role-playing, that is all incredibly interesting and fun when it lets you just constantly mess with that. But when you move over into the actual strategy components of the game, which are the real meat of the game, you end up with turn-based mechanics that are just dull at best, and real-time strategy mechanics that are just obnoxious. And that's what's ultimately so infuriating about the game. The role-playing side of it is interesting, it's pretty well written, it's got a good sense of humor to it, it's just plain fun. But to get to all of that fun stuff, you have to put up with the mediocre turn-based strategy mechanics and the downright awful real-time strategy mechanics, and there's just so much of having to put up with that that it ends up canceling out all of the fun you're having with the role-playing. Now, to be fair, in my experience, role-playing games generally have not been all that great on the mechanical side of things, but usually they're at least competent enough about them to where you can put up with any of the deficiencies that those mechanics have in order to focus on all the good stuff in the role-playing game. But there's not that level of competence with the mechanics in Dragon Commander. It is painfully obvious that Larian had little to no experience making strategy games, and the entire experience suffers heavily for it. Which is a real shame, because they could have had something truly impressive here, and instead, it's just a mess. So do yourself a favor if you were looking to get into the Divinity series. Avoid Dragon Commander. It's got a cool premise, the role-playing aspects are really cool, but to get to all the good stuff, you have to wade through an ocean of garbage, and that will just leave you with a sense of really wanting to like the game because of all the cool stuff it does, but the mechanics drag it down so much that you just can't. As for the rest of the Divinity series, well, I'll take a look at them eventually, although I really don't know when that's going to be. I have basically no interest in Divine Divinity or Beyond Divinity because they're basically Diablo clones, and if you've watched my channel for a while, you know how I feel about that entire genre. I've had some technical issues with Divinity 2, and then there's the matter of Original Sin 1 and 2 both being ridiculously long games. Now granted, out of the whole bunch, Original Sin 1 and 2 are definitely the most up my alley, 
but like I said, they're ridiculously long games, and I kind of don't want to mess around with them until I've messed around with the other Divinity games, just so I can have a much better perspective about how the series and Larian's development skills have built up over time. So we'll see how that goes, but as for Baldur's Gate 3, which they're working on right now, well, like I said, I'm going to wait until that's actually finished before I start taking a look at it. But I will admit that I did dabble a bit with the early access build just to see what they've got going on with it and whether or not it seems like it'll be interesting. It did seem to be shaping up pretty nicely, so we'll see how that goes too. At any rate, thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you all in later videos.